So you have at least five people interested in becoming an incorporated association. What's next? Whether you have been meeting as a group for years or are preparing for your very first meeting, there are a few steps to make the process easier. The existing committee or the currently interested parties need to meet to discuss the following. Select a name. Your name must be different from business and organisation names listed on the Australian Securities and Investment Commission website. Your name must not use any unauthorised names based on the Association's Regulations 2004. For example, names containing Commonwealth, Federal, United Nations, ANZAC, Bank or Cooperative. You must not register a business name until the Association has been approved and issued an incorporation number, which is like an Australian company number but for incorporated organisations. Develop a constitution. Your constitution determines how your association will be governed and the rules that must be followed. The NT Government website provides a template and a checklist to assist with this process. If you'd like support, the NT Government Association's compliance team can review your draft constitution to confirm that the content is compliant. Committee positions. The association's needs and activities will determine the required committee positions, the role and term of office. Usually, an association has a chair, a vice chair, a secretary, and a treasurer. A public officer is also required. The association may choose to have a dedicated public officer position, or they may determine that a member of the committee will be appointed for this role. Your public officer must reside in the Northern Territory. Other examples of positions on a committee may include fundraising coordinator, membership officer, and safety officer. There are no limits when it comes to the quantity of committee members. However, just keep in mind that too many committee members can impact the effectiveness and efficiency of meetings and decision-making processes. Categories of membership. The association may also need to consider membership categories such as family membership, active members, life members or social members. The rights of each membership also needs to be determined. For example, does a family membership have one vote or a vote per person? Can social members hold a position on the committee? Financial year. The association needs to consider a date for the end of the financial year that will best suit requirements. Noting that the association is required to hold an AGM within five months of the end of financial year. An incorporated association can choose the end of financial year date that suits their requirements. Often, it is difficult to find an accountant or auditor around the 30th of June, so this flexibility is helpful. For example, if you are a sporting group and intend to hold an end-of-season award ceremony in November, then it would be beneficial to have your AGM at this event. The association is required to allow enough time for the financial statement to be completed by your auditor and then made available to the members of your association for at least 14 days and then finally presented at the AGM. Prepare for your formation meeting. The current committee or interested parties will need to select a date, time and location for your first meeting. An agenda will also need to be prepared. You may wish to use the example available from our website. An attendance register will need to be started at this meeting. This may form the basis of your members register the motions at your first meeting need to cover the decision to become incorporated, to vote in your committee, or to acknowledge the ongoing role of your elected committee, if you have been operating already. Members will also be expected to vote on your proposed name and the draft constitution. Once the minutes are drafted from this formation meeting, you are able to lodge your application to become incorporated. The method for lodging is available on our website. The committee is then responsible for creating and updating a member's register, conflict of interest register, and an asset register. The member's register must include the name of each of the members, an address in which notices are able to be provided, email or postal, start date, 
and, if applicable, the cease date of their membership. An incorporated association must make the register of members available for inspection by members at reasonable times or at the time specified in the constitution of the association. A conflict of interest register is suggested for each meeting. This will ensure that any declarations can be noted to ensure that there are no allegations of corruption. The conflict of interest register is presented to members at the AGM. An asset register is used to record the assets for the association. The register will itemise assets such as a printer or a building. This will help your association prepare your annual financial statements, will reduce potential theft and assist with determining what type of auditor is required to produce your financial statement. For more information on starting an association and becoming incorporated, please keep watching or chat to the association's compliance team at associations.compliance at nt.gov.au Visit www.nt.gov.au slash associations